Good morning, Rayfield. I have a special message today. It is in reference to daylight saving time. This weekend, our time is going to change. And so I would be remiss if I did not share with you the message that we need to get used to the fact and understand the fact that the time is going to change this weekend. So Sunday, March 14th, is daylight saving time. It begins at 2 o'clock a.m. on March 14th. So the time is going to change. And then again on Sunday, November 7th, the time will change again. So I need you guys to realize that you got to set your clocks and get ready for daylight saving time. Daylight saving time 2021 officially begins at 2 a.m. Sunday, March 14th. So be sure to adjust your clocks either before you go to bed on Sunday or first thing Sunday morning. And those of you who will be attending the church service here at Rayfield on Sunday, you must realize that there is a time change. Talk to Miss Joan. I've already alerted Miss Joan that we must adjust the bus schedule so that everyone can still come to the service that is coming here and the chapel. So daylight saving time lasts from the second Sunday in March, which is this coming Sunday, to the first Sunday in November. And it's called Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so let's get ready for the time change. Let's learn a little bit more about it. So the clocks go forward or back. They, well, there was a question. Do the clocks go forward or back in April? Okay. We also talk about what states. Every state does not do this. We're in the state of Florida, so we do it. Today, most Americans spring forward, meaning that they turn their clocks ahead and we lose one hour the second Sunday in March and fall back, turn their clocks back the first Sunday in November. Okay, so this Sunday we will be turning our clocks ahead and we will be losing one hour. The main purpose of daylight savings time called summertime in many places in the world is to make better use of the daylight time. We change our clocks during the summer months so we can move an hour daylight from the morning to the evening. Okay, give you a little bit of history. Daylight saving times ends November 1st. Clocks will move back one hour in the United States. The policy started in the early 1900s as a way to cut the use of energy. Many Americans think it's no longer worth the hassle and some states try not to even observe this practice. March 14, 2021 begins daylight savings time. I'm looking for interesting information that might help us. Millions of Americans and Canadians do mark daylight saving time. So this happens in Canada as well as in America. Begins on March 14th. We have to get ready to lose an hour. Okay, I need you guys to think about that. Millions of Americans and Canadians will mark the start of daylight savings time, moving their clocks forward one hour. This time manipulation will result in the loss of 60 minutes. You're going to lose 60 minutes, one hour, this coming Sunday. Okay, so that precious time that you used to sleep, that's over. That means you're getting up one hour earlier. Okay, this started with Benjamin Franklin. It was the first suggested the set, resetting the clocks as a way of managing our energy. Okay, however, the, the, this American inventor thought that this would be a better way 
of a better use of our time. So we would have more daylight time and more time to work. Okay, we would get more time out of our day. So that was the purpose, was to get more time out of the day. Okay, say lights, Davies, light, Uncle Sam, your enemies have been up and you are at work an extra hour. So um, the inventors began to tell us that we were sleeping and that it was daylight. So as long as it is daylight, they want us to be up and working and moving about and getting our day started. So that's the purpose is to get our day started while it is daylight. In eight, 1986, President Ronald Reagan brought forward the DST start date by three weeks to the first Sunday in April. In 2005, George W. Bush not only moved up the spring forward date to the second Sunday in March, but also extended the time back to the last Sunday in October, first Sunday in November. So even our current presidents have participated in making sure that daylight savings time is useful and that it's helpful to our economy. Over the years, there have been several attempts to get rid of daylight savings time. However, most of them have been rejected by our legislators, other countries, have had more success in 2019 after a poll revealed the majority of residents were against it in Europe, and so they got rid of it. However, by 2022, all member, all countries um, are trying to get rid of this summertime daylight saving time. I doubt very seriously if they will be able to do that, but they are trying. Okay, so I just wanted to to know that it is daylight savings time this coming Sunday. So at two o'clock in the morning, your clocks will change when you get up. Um, so you might as well change your clock before you go to bed, get ready for the next day to the time to be different. And so that you will be able, ready, energized, ready to go one hour earlier. You are losing an hour this Sunday. So we will talk more in our classes about daylight saving time. I'm gonna show you some videos about it. I just want you to inundate yourself with the thought that we're losing that hour and you need to understand that if you don't get up and get yourself ready a little earlier, you're going to miss your buses, you're going to miss your schedules because all over the United States, Schedules are changing, not just here at Rayfield, all over the United States. Everybody's schedule is changing. The bus schedule is changing. The work day is changing. Everybody must adjust their clocks and get ready for daylight savings time. Now in your classes, they are going to ask you some questions today about daylight saving time and they're gonna teach you a whole entire lesson about how daylight savings time started, what is the purpose of daylight saving time, what is the meaning of daylight saving time, what will you do with your hour that you are losing, um, how, did the, how did daylight saving time begin, um, what happens in the spring, what happens in the fall. You need to know the difference between spring forward, fall back, okay, and we, one of our themes is spring forward and that's in April so I want you to remember that you're going to learn a lot about springing forward in April and I'm just going to give you a hint in 1895 was when daylight savings time began okay then there was a proverb the early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise so that's one of the um, different themes and different slogans that went uh, along with daylight saving time. It, we called it a proverb. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay? 
Remember I said spring forward, fall back. So that means that in the spring, the clock goes forward. And in the, I'm sorry, yeah, in the spring forward, fall back. In the spring, the clock goes forward. In the fall, the clock goes back. Okay, so we not only do this now, we do it again in November. But in November, you will be falling back. You will be losing an hour. Okay, so I gave you a lot of hints. You'll see the lesson in your classroom. Your teacher is going to talk to you about it. Get ready to adjust your clocks this weekend. Um... Understand that you need to put your clothes out earlier. You need to get used to daylight saving time. It takes an adjustment. Whenever the clock changes, it's an adjustment to your daily schedule. And sometimes you might feel a little bit tired um, because the time changed and you don't have as much time as you used to. You just have to make the adjustment and get used to it. So I am asking you guys to prepare for this adjustment so that you can handle it and you won't be cranky on top of all the other things we have going on in the world, the hay fever, the pandemic, the wash your hands, the wear your mask, all of those other things we're now embracing. This weekend is daylight saving time. Let's get ready for it. And as that, as usual at Rayfield, we're always learning. This is a facility for learning. This is an excellent, excellent opportunity for you to always stay on top of the things that are important in your life. So we are Rayfield Strong. We are educated. We are knowledgeable about what's happening in the world today. This message was about daylight saving time. Let's have a great day. We are Rayfield Strong. Good day, Rayfield family. Here are the latest weather forecasts. Tuesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine. High 74. Winds east, northeast at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Higher wind gusts possible. 
Tuesday night, partly cloudy, low 67, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Wednesday, sunshine and clouds mixed, high 76, winds east-northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Wednesday night, partly cloudy skies early will give way to occasional showers later during the night. Low 69, wind east northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour, chance of rain 40%. Thursday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 77, wind east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy, low around 70, wind east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday. Sunshine and clouds mixed. High 78. Winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Friday night. A few clouds. Low around 70. Winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Saturday. A few clouds early, otherwise mostly sunny. High 79. Winds east southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday, a few clouds from time to time, high near 80, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Monday, generally sunny despite a few afternoon clouds, high 81, winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday night, a few clouds from time to time, low 72, winds south southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. This is your weather for this week. A reminder, this weekend, before you go to bed, Saturday night, for those of you who have analog clocks, you know, the ones with the big hand, the little hand, and the other hand that swings around 60 times, make sure you set it an hour ahead. Yes, you will lose an hour of sleep. I know I am. For those of you who have straight digital, like your digital watches that now can do a lot of things, including setting your time automatically, your computers, your phones, those will automatically set itself. But for those who have those older clocks, with the hour hand, the minute hand, the second hand. Those are the ones that needs to be going forward one hour. Yes, you will lose an hour like I said. Make sure you keep your umbrellas handy. Make sure you find a way to keep your hats from flying off your head because I'm not going to be held responsible for anybody's hat. That's why. I didn't know they had wings, but if they did, that would be the first. Anyway, God bless, have a great week, and see you later.
joys of Rar may speak the joys of Rar. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching over to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. To fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching over to Zion, the beautiful city of God. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you see So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest. So gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. Still there, oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Pray along with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, going to Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. 
and his truth endure to all generations. Amen. St. Patrick was born, not in Ireland, but in Britain, around A.D. 35. Well, actually, he wasn't called St. Patrick at the time, or even Patrick, but was referred to as Maywin Sukkot. Good thing he changed his name later. St. Maywin's Day just doesn't have the same ring. We'll stick with Patrick, uh, just in case I'm slaughtering that pronunciation. Patrick was quite far from being a saint growing up. Until he was 16, he considered himself a pagan, or maybe even an atheist by today's definition. It was at that age when he was taken into slavery by a group of Irish marauders that attacked his village. Patrick was sold to his master, a druid chief in Ireland, and served him for six years. It was during his captivity that he became a Christian. One day he heard what he described as a voice compelling him in his sleep to leave his master and find a ship that awaited him. He fled to the coast of Ireland and eventually made it back to his home. He then decided to study in the monastery and stayed there for twelve years, during which he decided that his calling was to convert the pagans to Christianity. Eventually, he adopted his Christian name, Patricius, or Patrick as we now know it, and returned to Ireland after being appointed a bishop. Patrick was very successful at winning converts, which upset the Celtic Druids, who had him arrested several times, but he managed to escape each arrest. Patrick traveled through Ireland, establishing monasteries, schools, and churches throughout the land. Eventually, Patrick returned to where he had once been a slave, to pay his ransom to his former master. Despite being treated cruelly, Patrick didn't hold a grudge against him. As Patrick approached his master's old homestead, to his horror, he saw that it was in flames. 
Patrick found out that the stories people told about him had preceded him, and in a fit of frenzy, his old master gathered all of his treasures into his mansion, set them on fire, and then threw himself into the flames. An ancient record adds that his pride could not endure the thought of being vanquished by his former slave. There are a lot of legends surrounding St. Patrick. Some say that he raised people from the dead. Others say that he drove snakes out of Ireland, but since there aren't any fossil records of snakes in Ireland at that time, it's highly unlikely, unless he drove out the fossils as well. Many think that snakes was a metaphor for the conversion of the pagans, meaning that he drove paganism out from Ireland. Green wasn't the original color associated with St. Patrick, it was first blue. It eventually changed, for various reasons, probably because of being used in various Irish flags and how green is associated with Ireland itself. Patrick worked in Ireland for 30 years. Afterwards, he retired and then died on March 17th, in AD 461. There wasn't a canonization process when Patrick died. That didn't come up until the 12th century. He would have been declared a saint by acclamation, and his sainthood approved by a local bishop soon after he died. St. Patrick's Day was originally a Catholic holiday, and still is, but has also evolved into a secular holiday, being celebrated by non-Irish, non-Catholics, and ironically enough, even atheists. Today, when people think of St. Patrick, they imagine a leprechaun in a green jacket, hat, pipe, clover, and a pot of gold. Not a man who devoted 30 years of his life to teaching and helping the Irish. Hopefully you now know a little more about the history of St. Patrick. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, February 1st, 2021. And guess what? It's time for a conversation with God. It's good to see all of you and who are joining us this morning for this very special time uh, that we come together, uh, spend time in the presence of the Lord, pouring out our, our worship and our love upon him, letting him know how grateful we are for who he is and all he has done for us recognizing his righteousness, recognizing his sovereignty, his power, his authority, his majesty, all that he is, he is the most high God. And we get, we give him the glory, the honor, and the praise for blessing us to see one more sunny day, the start of a brand new month that was not promised to us, but God has made it so, and so we are rejoicing this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God has smiled upon us. We are breathing this morning, recognizing that some people went to sleep last night and did not wake up this morning. There's some folks that wake up, woke up this morning, but they took their last breath. But by his mercy and his grace, we are still here, and we thank God for that. Good morning to all of our prayer warriors. We see you all. Jumping on, Sister Rome, good morning, Brother Michael, Mitchell, Sister Angela Johnson, who else is on here? Our brother all the way from uh, San Antonio, Sister Hayes, Terry Cooper is in the building, Sister Murray, Sister Frazier, Pauline Solomon, uh, Michaela is always here. Thank God for you. Lena Hines, good morning to you. Uh, Sister Plummer, Sister Dorothy Malone, Sister Stephanie Harris, and so many others. Sister Toby, all right. We all are joining in for this time of prayer. And I want you to know we, uh, we see you and we appreciate all of you who take the time out of your morning schedule to join with us for uh, prayer. Uh, as always, we in invite and we encourage you to leave your prayer requests in the comment section, whether you are on YouTube or Facebook. If you have anything that you would like for us to pray for you or with you, about, please uh, write that in the comment section so that our prayer warriors can take it before the throne of God and to um, request his mercy on your behalf or on the behalf of others. That's what prayer is all about. Prayer is a blessing that's given to the children of God that we use for the glory of God to help the people of God and to help the world. So if you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate uh, to share that in the comment section. We believe, we believe in the privilege and the power of prayer. So I know 
Uh, all right, Sister Gail Abram, okay, from San Antonio. Thank you for that correction. That sister uh, from San Antonio, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, this morning. And always, we you know that you've been here with us. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, this morning for our meditation, we are going to the gospel according to John, and we're going to John chapter 5. And I already see that some of you are watching frozen video, but hopefully you can still hear me and, and follow with me through this meditation. You, you know, if you've been uh, joining with us for this conversation over the past few weeks, you know, there's some mornings that the video, uh, Wi-Fi, whatever the case may be, there are issues with it, but hopefully you can still follow along with the audio this morning. It's all about the word. It's all about the word and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. We're going to John chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 1 through 9. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Prayer warriors, if you would, just write that in the comment section uh, so that everyone can follow along. That is John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. The Bible reads, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had not long had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, Another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. For our meditation this morning, uh, we give you the title, It's Time to Walk. It's Time to Walk. Everybody say that. It's Time to Walk. Did you not know that God is a healer? The scripture refers to him as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Oftentimes when we think about God as a healer, we think about him healing our physical ailments, our sickness, our bodies, when our bodies are, are broken. And when we find, uh, we read this story here in John chapter 5, this miracle that Jesus is performing, we see a man who uh, was dealing with a physical ailment, and he was in that condition for a long time. And Jesus came along and, and you know, and healed him. But what I want to focus on uh, today and throughout our prayers for this week is a lot deeper than uh physical healing. I want to talk about emotional and mental healing and God's desire for you and I uh, to be whole. A lot of folks are just like this man that Jesus found at the pool of Bethesda. And it says in verse number three, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. There are a lot of folks right now who may not have physical uh, ailments or problems, but sin, uh, the burdens of life, the, the cares of this world, the afflictions of life, the things that they have endured or faced in life uh, due to their own choices or by the actions of others have left them emotionally impotent, withered, blind. They're struggling to move forward in, in order to really enjoy uh, the peace uh, that God wants them to uh, uh, to enjoy and to have that joy in their spirit that God wants them to have. There are a lot of folks right now, and maybe even some of you who are watching this 
and you're emotionally scarred, you're emotionally wounded, you're emotionally hurt, you're still dealing with sorrow, you're still dealing with grief, you're still dealing with, with bitterness in your spirit from someone that hurt you uh, a long time ago, you're still struggling uh, with loneliness, you're struggling with, with all kinds of uh, emotional and, and mental uh, illnesses and, and, and hurts that you've been dealing with for some time brokenness and worry and these things, these ailments, these uh, wounds that you're dealing with are keeping you from being whole. That's what God wants you to be. God wants you to be whole. If you notice, Jesus asked this man a question when he saw him laying there. He asked him, do you want to be made whole? And that's my question to you this morning. Do you want to be made whole? To be whole means to be complete, to be well, to be healthy. And to be healthy doesn't just necessarily or only mean to be physically healthy without, you know, uh, brokenness in our body or uh, ailments in our organs. To be whole really means to be healthy physically, spiritually, and mentally. And believe it or not, that's what God desires for you, to be whole in its entirety, to be healthy mentally, spiritually, and physically. And if there's anybody that has the power to do that, God does. In Psalms 147 and verse number three, the psalmist reminds us of this very powerful trait of God, that our God is a healer. And I want you to know as we uh, get into this prayer today and as we go through these prayers this week, that the God that we serve is a healer. Psalms 147 and verse number three. The psalmist said, he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. So my question to you this morning is, where does it hurt? What is the, the, the mental or the emotional hurt that you are dealing with this morning? What has you in that position where you're like that man in John chapter 5 who's waiting uh, for something to happen so that you can find healing for your, your ailment? Is it sorrow? Is it, is it grief? Is it loneliness? Is guilt overwhelming your spirit? Has it stolen your joy? Is it loneliness? Is it uh, brokenness? Has, has your heart been broken uh, through a relationship that has not worked? Is it uh, bitterness due to somebody hurting you? Whatever it is, God is more than able to make you whole. And so throughout this week, our prayers are going to be focused on taking us from, uh, from whole, H-O-L-E, to whole, W-H-O-L-E. God is going to heal your brokenness. And we're going to deal with some of these things, how you uh, can be made whole, how you can rise up uh, and walk. Because it's time now. It's time to walk. God wants you to walk. He wants you to uh, take up your bed. He wants you to rise up from that situation. He wants you to walk in the newness of life. He wants you to walk in his joy. He wants you to walk in his peace that passes all understanding. He wants you to walk in wholeness, completeness. He wants you to walk in good health, wellness, sound mind. That's what God desires for you. If there's anyone that can provide it, we know and believe that God can. So God is going to be speaking to you through his word. He's saying to you, just like he said to that man in John chapter 5, do you want to be made whole? Now is your time. It's time to walk. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your power to heal. Father, we realize that not only do you heal the ailments of our physical body, 
you heal the ailments of our heart. Emotional sickness and brokenness, mental issues, Father. We know, Father, that, that you heal the heart. And right now, Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you asking for your mercy. Asking, Father, that you will heal the hurting hearts that are in this prayer group right now. Not only for those who are joining me right now, but anyone who may be watching this video at any time, Father, who's dealing with brokenness in heart, who has wounds, Father, due to the afflictions of life or sin or anything maybe that was done to them or even as a result of their own choices. But right now, they're struggling this morning. They're struggling with, with grief, with bitterness, with loneliness, with all kinds of issues, of, of, with brokenness of heart and spirit. They're struggling with worry and, and anxiety, and some are even dealing with depression right now. They think that all is lost. But Father, we're praying for their healing right now. We pray, Father, that, that you will do just as Jesus did for this woman who was, a, this man who was waiting for his healing. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask that you will enable them to rise up and walk. And Father, that they will take heed to your word, knowing that in you, we have the victory. In you, we can go from whole to whole. We can go from uh, having a sense of emptiness to having a sense of completeness, knowing that we are complete in you. So Father, guide us as we go through this week. I thank you so much for just allowing us to uh, see another day. Through your mercy and your grace, Father, you blessed us to be able to open our eyes this morning to experience this day we've never seen before and we will never see again. I thank you so much for all the uh, the saints, the children of yours who are gathered together right now in this very place, Father. Even though we may be coming together and virtually, Father, we come together by faith. By faith, Father, we come before your throne from near and far as your children, Father, recognizing that our God, our Father, he can do anything. And we just, we just come to you right now in Jesus' name on behalf of those, Father, who, who are hurting today. As I said, not necessarily because of, and not only because of physical illness, but because their heart, their hearts are hurting. Whatever that heaviness is, whatever that burden is, we know that you are a burden bearer. And we ask in Jesus' name that you heal those right now who are sick. Restore them back to a normality of health and strength, a sense of completeness and, and wellness that only you can provide. Father, we thank you, Father, for all those who know that you are the source of our resources and that our help comes from you. Father, we pray that as we go through this day, that we remember that you love us, you care about us, you know what we're going through, and you've given us the victory. Help us to walk in victory, not in defeat. We're not victims, Father. We are victors because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, Father. We are not our feelings. We are your children, children of the Most High God, Father, who, who you have given victory over sin, victory over, over the enemy. No weapon formed against us shall prosper whether that weapon is loneliness or guilt or, or anxiety or whatever it may be, it will not succeed, Father. We will have the victory because Christ has already won the battle. And so, Father, we just ask that you will encourage our hearts this morning. Encourage those who may be uh, watching right now whose hearts are weighed down. Help them to rise up and walk today. And Father, bless us as we go through this day. Give us the strength the wisdom and the courage, Father, to fulfill our purpose and to, and to be a blessing to those that we come in contact with. We don't know what this day holds, Father, but we trust and believe that you hold this day in your hands. 
and all souls are yours. Help us, Father, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We never know what people are going through that we may come in contact with. So help us, Father, to, to spread your love wherever we go, to be kind, to be patient, to be long-suffering towards others so that others will see our good works and glorify you. Father, watch over those who may be dealing with physical illness today, those who are visiting doctors and have procedures and things of that nature going on today. We pray that you will be with those doctors and nurses and heal them, Father. Those who are struggling with, with grief and loss this morning, as always, we pray that you will be their comforter. Give them that peace that passes all understanding. And Father, for those who may be confused and don't know which way to turn. Help them, Father, to turn to you. Give them, Father, in Jesus' name, the wisdom they need to do what is right in your sight. And Father, for those who are feeling anxious, settle their hearts. Help us to remember what your words say. Let not your heart be troubled. On many occasions, Father, you told us not to be, uh, to be anxious for nothing, Father, but to pray about everything. And that's what we're doing, Father, because we believe that you can do anything. We are your children. You are, your, you are our Father. And we thank you, Father, hearing our prayer. We thank you for asking our prayer. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time to walk, y'all. It is time to walk. I truly believe in Jesus' name that God is going to, to restore some folks. He's going to help you to be whole. He's going to help you to overcome uh, that bitterness, that loneliness, that, that anxiety, that all those, uh, that, that whatever that may be, that ailment in your spirit, your brokenness. I believe God is going to heal those things in your life and in your heart this week. So I hope, trust, and pray that you will continue to join me uh, this week at 7.30 a.m. as we talk and we look to God for the healing of our heart. Where does it hurt? What's bothering you? What's the hurt that's keeping you from being whole? God wants you to be whole, and he is the great physician. Please join me again tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. for another conversation with God. You all have a blessed day.
Good morning, Rayfield. I have a special message today. It is in reference to daylight saving time. This weekend, our time is going to change. And so I would be remiss if I did not share with you the message that we need to get used to the fact and understand the fact that the time is going to change this weekend. So Sunday, March 14th, is daylight saving time. It begins at 2 o'clock a.m. on March 14th. So the time is going to change. And then again on Sunday, November 7th, the time will change again. So I need you guys to realize that you got to set your clocks and get ready for daylight saving time. Daylight saving time 2021 officially begins at 2 a.m. Sunday, March 14th. So be sure to adjust your clocks either before you go to bed on Sunday or first thing Sunday morning. And those of you who will be attending the church service here at Rayfield on Sunday, you must realize that there is a time change. Talk to Miss Joan. I've already alerted Miss Joan that we must adjust the bus schedule so that everyone can still come to the service that is coming here and the chapel. So daylight saving time lasts from the second Sunday in March, which is this coming Sunday, to the first Sunday in November. And it's called Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so let's get ready for the time change. Let's learn a little bit more about it. So the clocks go forward or back. Uh, they, well, there was a question. Do the clocks go forward or back in April? Okay. We also talk about what states. Every state does not do this. We're in the state of Florida, so we do it. Today, most Americans spring forward, meaning that they turn their clocks ahead and we lose one hour the second Sunday in March and fall back, turn their clocks back the first Sunday in November. Okay, so this Sunday we will be turning our clocks ahead and we will be losing one hour. The main purpose of daylight savings time called summertime in many places in the world is to make better use of the daylight time. We change our clocks during the summer months so we can move an hour daylight from the morning to the evening. Okay, give you a little bit of history. Daylight saving times ends November 1st. Clocks will move back one hour in the United States. The policy started in the early 1900s as a way to cut the use of energy. Many Americans think it's no longer worth the hassle and some states try not to even observe this practice. March 14, 2021 begins daylight saving time. I'm looking for interesting information that might help us. Millions of Americans and Canadians do mark daylight saving time. So this happens in Canada as well as in America. Begins on March 14th. You have to get ready to lose an hour. Okay, I need you guys to think about that. Millions of Americans and Canadians will mark the start of daylight savings time, moving their clocks forward one hour. This time manipulation will result in the loss of 60 minutes. You're going to lose 60 minutes, one hour, this coming Sunday. Okay, so that precious time that you used to sleep, that's over. That means you're getting up one hour earlier. Okay, this started with Benjamin Franklin. It was the first suggested the set, resetting the clocks as a way of managing our energy. Okay, however, the, the, this American inventor thought that this would be a better way 
of a better use of our time. So we would have more daylight time and more time to work. Okay, we would get more time out of our day. So that was the purpose, was to get more time out of the day. Okay, say like Davies, light, Uncle Sam, your enemies have been up and you are at work an extra hour. So um, the inventors began to tell us that we were sleeping and that it was daylight. So as long as it is daylight, they want us to be up and working and moving about and getting our day started. So that's the purpose, is to get our day started while it is daylight. In 1986, President Ronald Reagan brought forward the DST start date by three weeks to the first Sunday in April. In 2005, George W. Bush not only moved up the spring forward date to the second Sunday in March, but also extended the time back to the last Sunday in October, first Sunday in November. So even our current presidents have participated in making sure that daylight savings time is useful and that it's helpful to our economy. Over the years, there have been several attempts to get rid of daylight savings time. However, most of them have been rejected by our legislators. Other countries have had more success in 2019 after a poll revealed the majority of residents were against it in Europe, and so they got rid of it. However, by 2022, all member, all countries um, are trying to get rid of this summertime daylight saving time. I doubt very seriously if they will be able to do that, but they are trying. Okay, so I just wanted you to know that it is daylight savings time this coming Sunday. So at two o'clock in the morning, your clocks will change when you get up. Um, so you might as well change your clock before you go to bed get ready for the next day to the time to be different and so that you will be able, ready, energized, ready to go one hour earlier. You are losing an hour this Sunday. So we will talk more in our classes about daylight saving time. I'm going to show you some videos about it. I just want you to inundate yourself with the thought that we're losing that hour and you need to understand that if you don't get up and get yourself ready a little earlier, you're going to miss your buses, you're going to miss your schedules because all over the United States, schedules are changing, not just here at Rayfield, all over the United States, everybody's schedule is changing. The bus schedule is changing, the work day is changing. Everybody must adjust their clocks and get ready for daylight savings time. Now, in your classes, they are going to ask you some questions today about daylight saving time, and they're going to teach you a whole entire lesson about how daylight savings time started, what is the purpose of daylight saving time, what is the meaning of daylight saving time, what will you do with your hour that you are losing um, how did the, how did daylight saving time begin? Um, what happens in the spring? What happens in the fall? You need to know the difference between spring forward, fall back. Okay, and we one of our themes is spring forward, and that's in April. So I want you to remember that you're going to learn a lot about springing forward in April. And I'm just going to give you a hint in 1895 was when daylight savings time began, okay? Then there was a proverb, the early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. So that's one of the um, different themes and different slogans that went uh, along with daylight savings time. It, we called it a proverb. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay? 
Remember I said spring forward, fall back. So that means that in the spring, the clock goes forward. And in the, I'm sorry, yeah, in the spring forward, fall back. In the spring, the clock goes forward. In the fall, the clock goes back. Okay, so we not only do this now, we do it again in November. But in November, you will be falling back. You will be losing an hour. Okay, so I gave you a lot of hints. You'll see the lesson in your classroom. Your teacher is going to talk to you about it. Get ready to adjust your clocks this weekend. Um, understand that you need to put your clothes out earlier. You need to get used to daylight saving time. It takes an adjustment. Whenever the clock changes, it's an adjustment to your daily schedule. And sometimes you might feel a little bit tired um, because the time changed and you don't have as much time as you used to. You just have to make the adjustment and get used to it. So I am asking you guys to prepare for this adjustment so that you can handle it and you won't be cranky on top of all the other things we have going on in the world, the hay fever, the pandemic, the wash your hands, the wear your mask, all of those other things we're now embracing this weekend is daylight saving time. Let's get ready for it. And as that, as usual at Rayfield, we're always learning. This is a facility for learning. This is an excellent, excellent opportunity for you to always stay on top of the things that are important in your life. So we are Rayfield Strong. We are educated. We are knowledgeable about what's happening in the world today. This message was about daylight saving time. Let's have a great day. We are Rayfield Strong. us possible. Tuesday night, partly cloudy, low 67, winds east northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Wednesday, sunshine and clouds mix, high 76, winds east northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Wednesday night, partly cloudy skies early will give way to occasional showers later during the night. Low 69. Winds east northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Chance of rain 40%. Thursday. Intervals of clouds and sunshine. High 77. 
winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy, low around 70. Winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday, sunshine and clouds mixed. High 78. Winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Friday night, a few clouds, low around 70. Winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Saturday, a few clouds early, otherwise mostly sunny. High 79. Winds east southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday, a few clouds from time to time. High near 80. Winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Monday, generally sunny despite a few afternoon clouds. High 81. Winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday night, a few clouds from time to time. Low 72. Winds south southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. This is your weather for this week. A reminder, this weekend, before you go to bed, Saturday night, for those of you who have analog clocks, you know, the ones with the big hand, the little hand, and the other hand that swings around 60 times, make sure you set it an hour ahead. Yes, you will lose an hour of sleep. I know I am. For those of you who have straight digital, like your digital watches that now can do a lot of things, including setting your time automatically, your computers, your phones, those will automatically set itself. But for those who have those older clocks with the hour hand, the minute hand, the second hand, those are the ones that needs to be going forward one hour. Yes, you will lose an hour like that day. Make sure you keep your umbrellas handy. Make sure you find a way to keep your hats from flying off your head because I'm not going to be held responsible for anybody's hat. That's why. I didn't know they had wings, but if they did, that would be the first. Anyway, God bless. Have a Great week and see you later. Come be there, love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord and thus. Around the throne and thus around the throne We're marching to Zion Beautiful, beautiful Zion We're marching over to Zion The beautiful city of God Let those refuse to sing Who never knew our God but children of the heavenly King, children of the heavenly King, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching over to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. To fairer worlds on high. To fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching over to Zion, the beautiful city of God.
to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the along with me as we go to the Lord in prayer going to Psalms 100 make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye land serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pastures enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen.
our Bill of Rights. Oh, ooh. We have a right to vote. I have a right to vote. I have a right to see a doctor. I have a right to go to church. I have a right to humane discipline. I have a right to community outings. I have a right to talk. I have a right to education. I have a right to refuse treatment. I have a right to privacy and dignity. I have a right to make money. I have a right to exercise. I have a right to. Oh, sorry. I have, I have a right to see my records. records. I have a right to own possessions. I have a right to receive services. I have a right to no discrimination. I have a right to no physical harm. St. Patrick was born, not in Ireland, but in Britain, around A.D. 35. Well, actually, he wasn't called St. Patrick at the time, or even Patrick, but was referred to as Maywin Sukkot. Good thing he changed his name later. St. Maywin's Day just doesn't have the same ring. We'll stick with Patrick, uh, just in case I'm slaughtering that pronunciation. Patrick was quite far from being a saint growing up. Until he was 16, he considered himself a pagan, or maybe even an atheist by today's definition. It was at that age when he was taken into slavery by a group of Irish marauders that attacked his village. Patrick was sold to his master, a druid chief in Ireland, and served him for six years. It was during his captivity that he became a Christian. One day he heard what he described as a voice compelling him in his sleep to leave his master and find a ship that awaited him. He fled to the coast of Ireland and eventually made it back to his home. He then decided to study in the monastery and stayed there for twelve years, during which he decided that his calling was to convert the pagans to Christianity. Eventually, he adopted his Christian name, Patricius, or Patrick as we now know it, and returned to Ireland after being appointed a bishop. Patrick was very successful at winning converts, which upset the Celtic Druids, who had him arrested several times, but he managed to escape each arrest. Patrick traveled through Ireland, establishing monasteries, schools, and churches throughout the land. Eventually, Patrick returned to where he had once been a slave, to pay his ransom to his former master. Despite being treated cruelly, Patrick didn't hold a grudge against him. As Patrick approached his master's old homestead, to his horror, he saw that it was in flames. Patrick found out that the stories people told about him had preceded him, and in a fit of frenzy, his old master gathered all of his treasures into his mansion, set them on fire, and then threw himself into the flames. An ancient record adds that his pride could not endure the thought of being vanquished by his former slave. There are a lot of legends surrounding St. Patrick. Some say that he raised people from the dead. Others say that he drove snakes out of Ireland, but since there aren't any fossil records of snakes in Ireland at that time, it's highly unlikely, unless he drove out the fossils as well. Many think that snakes was a metaphor for the conversion of the pagans, meaning that he drove paganism out from Ireland. Green wasn't the original color associated with St. Patrick, it was first blue. It eventually changed, for various reasons, probably because of being used in various Irish flags and how green is associated with Ireland itself. Patrick worked in Ireland for 30 years. Afterwards, he retired and then died on March 17th, in AD 461. There wasn't a canonization process when Patrick died. That didn't come up until the 12th century. He would have been declared a saint by acclamation, and his sainthood approved by a local bishop soon after he died. St. Patrick's Day was originally a Catholic holiday, and still is, but has also evolved into a secular holiday, being celebrated by non-Irish, non-Catholics, and ironically enough, even atheists. Today, when people think of St. Patrick, they imagine a leprechaun in a green jacket, hat, pipe, clover, and a pot of gold. Not a man who devoted 30 years of his life to teaching and helping the Irish. Hopefully you now know a little more about the history of St. Patrick.
what I'm trying to show you here in Walmart is how to maneuver the store, how to get what you want, ask questions, look for your identifying codes to tell you what's down each aisle as you shop. And remember, try to remember where they are because each store is set up basically the same. They may not be in the same directions, but you have pharmacy and you have pharmacy things where pharmacy is. As far as some pharmaceutical items, you have your clean, your facial, facial items. It's Easter time. Walmart is all prepared. They put these aisles right in the front of the store by the cash register so that you won't miss them. You don't have to ask for them. These are all the Easter goodies. And they're here and their prices and they're very reasonable. Here you can buy the big Easter egg with the Skittles and they're $1. They're one dollar. And then there's the with the pop rocks. One dollar. I don't know what pop rocks are, but it sounds it sounds like Kool-Aid. And we have it here with Starburst. One dollar. And then we have it here with the M&M's. One dollar. We have the little birdies. Marshmallow birds. One dollar and 24 cents. And then I'm going to go on the other aisle. The other side of the aisle where we have basically the same things. You have all kinds of candy, all kinds of candy. You have bags, bags of eggs, full with candy, and then you have bags of eggs that's empty. There are movies, The Wizard of Oz, that's very familiar, Mamma Mia, also a very familiar movie. Now we have the baskets here that you would buy and fill it with all the goodies for the children. Or you have some big, big children that love it too. Ribbons. And games that you could play on Easter. This is a set. This is a set that you can play baseball. When you Easter day, you can go outside and play baseball. And if you didn't like the straw baskets, they have the plastic containers. Plastic containers. Easter baskets in a plastic container, which you can always use afterwards for anything you want. And they are 98 cents. And they're very pretty. Some have baseballs, football on it different things to attract different children. And of course, they also want you to have a water, 
water park splash day on Easter in your yard. That looks exciting. These are the things that I put out for families to enjoy and entertain yourself on big days. Easter is April the 4th and it's just right around the corner. It comes real quick. These shelves were filled. Now they're empty. People are buying everything. Here's another game that they have that you can play. Two in a sack race. Here's another game. Bunny hop. Hopscotch. Bunny hop hopscotch. Well, that looks very interesting. You've got the rings on the floor and you hop in each one just like a hopscotch game. These are all priced at $9.98. Easter egg toss. Very nice. Here's another Easter egg toss game. Toss the bean bag in the bunny, in the bunny's mouth. There's a wreath that you can buy to put on your front door for the Easter holiday. The straws for the baskets, different colors, different squiggly ones and straight ones. And you have more baskets, pretty baskets. The tin can baskets are nice because you can always use that after, nothing ever happens to it. And then we have the fluffy animals. Very nice. Everything for Easter. Of course, we know what day Easter is. And it's a big celebration. It's a religious holiday. Celebrates Christ. These are all the candies that you can buy in the bulk, meaning the big bags. Big bags of candy. Big ones. Big bags. And they're not that expensive either. Well, children, you can really have fun shopping at Walmart. It's not hard because if you ask a salesperson, they can tell you what aisle. This is F11 to find your goods. Whatever you're looking for has a number or a name. Thank you. More personal care. Old Spice Swagger for the here, for the men. Doves. For men, cute. There's the Old Spice Swagger Shampoo and Conditioner. Then you have the Men Care. These are really nice. And you'll find Head and Shoulders. And I am not advertising. I am just telling you what's in this aisle. And those are shampoos. Over here you have creams and lotions. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Now this is Miss Joy. What I'm trying to show you here is just how to maneuver the store. I'm not doing any advertisement. Some of them don't have names, but they do have numbers. G21. G22, you ask for what you want. If you wanted to buy 
a body brush, a bath brush, you would ask and they would tell you to go to G22 for the bath brushes. Bath brush, that looks like a nice thing to have. They have the bristle brush and they have the fabric exfoliating. Very nice. They also have paint and hardware. Let's try looking at some of those. I see the sign because I want something there. So I turn around and I go where it says paint and hardware. There's a sign, paint and hardware. So if you wanted to buy paint and hardware, you would come here. This is the counter and they would mix your paint for you according to what color you're looking for and this is where you would come for that now I'm looking for some glue not glue, tape okay, if I find it in here I'll be alright in this aisle you have all the stuff for painting stripping paint Sanding. You have air conditioners in this aisle. Shelving and storage. Some decorative things that you would find in hardware. Okay. I don't see any tape down here, so I don't need anything else in here. Air conditioners, let's go around and you see the paint. Excuse me? Yes. I would like to find some tape. Next side. Which, over that side? Okay, I'll thank you. I'll 10. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See, that's how it's done. I'm looking for tape. I asked her. She told me the next aisle over, which is aisle 10. So let's go in aisle 10 and see if I find my tape. I'll show you the number one aisle is at the other end of the aisle. So I am looking for tape. Yes, there's a lot of tape here. Corilla tape. Somebody told me about this and I have to try it. going to try this one it says crystal clear don't need it to be seen heavy-duty extra thick adhesive this is it gorilla I'm not going to show the name but this is a tape it's supposed to be very good So that was easy. And they have books. In this aisle you also find your notebooks. Notebooks. All these are notebooks. 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 I don't expect you to remember where things are, but I expect that you will remember to ask the attendant in the store, the salesperson, 
to tell you what I'll define what you're looking for. And if you don't see an attendant, you can go to customer service area in the store. There's a big sign as you walk into all Walmart's customer service. You can go to them. You just heard an announcement. Customer needs help in aisle 10 and someone will come to that aisle and help you find what you're looking for. We did that, we did, okay. That's my shopping for today. This is Miss Joy. I am coming to you from Walmart store. And we are Rayfield Virtual Literacy Program to help all the students to learn to live and achieve a good, successful life. Thank you. This is your pharmaceutical area where you have you just have to ask here we have again G12 they don't label them all with the names but they do have the numbers that the salesperson can tell you where to go G12 if you want to buy alcohol anything to do with how should I say? Gauze pads. If somebody get hurt, like first aid, first aid stuff. The next aisle. The same place. Band aids. Okay, this is pharmaceutical. You have your personal needs. And here you have your toothpaste. Excuse me. Thank you. This aisle has a sign that says personal care. Mouthwashes, toothpaste, toothbrushes. So everything that you would need for your personal care would be in that aisle that says personal care. Toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwashes. Some baby lotion, baby wash, wipes, personal care. Let's see what this aisle says at the end. Um, I don't, I see what's down here, but let's see what it tells us is down here. I'm coming in the wrong way. Hair care. Trying to get to the side. I don't know if you can see it slightly. It says hair care. I'm going to turn around and go back up that aisle. Because we all love to take care of our hair. Hair care, you would come up the aisle that says hair care. And you would find all the color treatments. There you go. Woo! The green, the red, the purple. This is everything for the hair in this aisle. Over here you have all the creams, the gels, the jams. Aragon oil, coconut oil, castor oil, castor oil, 
and you have little things for your hair, cosmetic sponges. But everything in here is hair care. Everything. Everybody uses something different according to your hair, your texture, your quality, and what you're looking for. On this side, oh, we have hair. Hair, and then we have scarves. We have scarves, very pretty scarves. I have to let people pass, sorry. And they have the, whatever you need to put the hair in, they have everything here. They have, the, they didn't forget the men. They have your dude rags, guys. They have your creams and your beard conditioner. These are things that I never knew about before. Men's two-in-one shampoo and soap. This is your beard conditioner. Beard Blam. Beard Blam. Beard and hair conditioner. Oops, here's a good one. Anti-odor wipes. Gently cleanses and, and condition. So men, you don't have to worry because when you come to Walmart, they have stuff for you too. Here is something that I've seen the guys use with a hair. It's a hair sponge. Now, dude rags are nice, but I think dude rags belong in your house at night. When you go to bed, when you wake up to be a gentleman, you must take it off to come out. That's my opinion. Now here you have more conditioners and lotions. This is Kalalu. We cu cu cutting it up and we're going to cook it. This is how it looks before we cut it up. Before we cut it, we cleaned it and took off all the leaves, just like you would collard greens. This is softer than collard greens, though it cooks very quick.
I'm sorry, in the background, I have some black history on the television. I forgot to turn it down. Next, we're going to clean up the codfish and boil it. And we're going to season the kalala. Looking at the kalalu, it's steaming up even more now. It's getting better. It's cooking. It's looking good. Once it's steamed, then after the fish boil up with the green bananas, after the fish boil up with the green banana and the, um, the yam, then the fish will go in, pick up small, and go in with the kalalu. Now the water is boiling up and the banana and the yam and the fish, the water is boiling up nicely. They're cooking. The skin of the banana has changed from green to a little different shade of green. The yam is looking good. I'm going to cover that back. Let's go over to the kalalu. The kalalu is looking good. It's simmered down. Everything look like it's cooking. I don't know if you can see, but the codfish was picked up and put in there. I wasn't here to take that picture, but the, if you, you can't see the fish. Oh, here's, a, here's some big pieces of fish. After we cook the, cook the kalalu down, this is the pieces of fish that we pick up and put in the kalalu. This is what you call a healthy Sunday morning breakfast. We just put the codfish to soak for tomorrow's, to finish up the kalalu and the codfish tomorrow. We soak it to get all the salt out, and then tomorrow we'll prepare it with the codfish and some other foods, Jamaican food. Thank you. This is the codfish. As I told you, it's not like our Jamaican codfish, but that's what we can get in Florida. But it's codfish, salted. So we soaked it out overnight so all the salt can come out. Now we're gonna pick it up and put it in with the kalalu. This is the table setting, which we were taught in Jamaica. As children, you had to learn how to set the table for dinner. On your right, you have your fork, which is one is for the dessert and one is for eating. And on your left, you have your knife with the sharp edge pointing in towards the plate. Then you have your dessert spoon and you have your soup spoon. Now, I have a jar of pickled pepper Tonight we do not have a cake, so we're going to use the cake fork, which is right here, to serve the pickle pepper, because the pickle pepper has to have its own utensils. Anything else that goes in there with food on it will spoil it. Now this is the setting that I'm going to use to serve the kalalu 
and the green banana and the yam. I have not put it in the plate yet, but I'm going to put it in the plate and then I will get back to the video. Thank you. This is the meal that we have prepared, my husband and myself. And it is the yellow yam, the green bananas, and the kalalu cooked down with some codfish and carrots and onions and seas well seasoned. And as I said, the pickled pepper will go on it for those who choose to have the hot pepper in the meal. My napkin is there for after. We'll open the napkin and put it on your lap as you eat. And uh, there's a cup for tea if you wish. And this is breakfast or lunch in Jamaica. A very nutritious meal, delicious. And I hope that maybe one day somebody can cook it for you. Please take a good look and one day. Thank you. This is Miss Joy from Rayfield. Thank you. Hello, it's Bill of Rice time. Today we're going to be speaking on the Bill of Rice. The bill that we will be talking about today, you have the right to refuse treatment. That is one of your rights. Know your rights. Know your rights. Listen to the Bill of Rice every week as me and Miss Joy speak on them. Because they are very, very important to you guys. Everyone should know their rights. Especially if you are making decisions about your life yourself. Listen to this bill today. You have the right to refuse treatment. Know your rights. The bill of rights that we are discussing, again, I would say, no that you have the right to refuse treatment. If you live in a group home, or even if you live at home, and you are making decisions on your life yourself, you have the right to refuse treatment. I don't advise you to refuse treatment, but that is one of the rights that you have. So if you're living in a group home and you are living at home and you are making decisions on your own about your life, you have that right to refuse treatment if you want to. If you are living again in a group home, living at home, you have the right to refuse treatment. You have a right to refuse the medications that the doctors prescribe to you. The group home have the right to document your refusal, your refusal to take your medication. It is very important that you take your medication because when the doctors prescribe medication for you, that medication is for your health. If the medication do not agree with you and it make you feel really bad, you need to report it to your caregiver. 
Let them know that that medication making you feel worse. So that they can contact your doctor and let your doctor know that the medication is not agreeing with you. The doctor then will switch your medication to something that will make you feel better for the condition that he is treating you for. So guys, remember, don't just refuse to take your medication, even though it is one of your rights. But if you got health problems, by not taking your medication can make your health worse. It can worsen your health. So please be very careful when you make that decision. Make the right decision. Let the caregiver know that the medication make you feel bad. So they can contact your doctor and he can switch whatever he is giving you. When you report it to your group homes, they will document it. They have to put it in your file so that if anything come up, they can always let someone know he make his own decisions. He refused to take his medication, and that is his right. They would have to document it and put it into a file. Yes. So don't be so quick to refuse your medication. Don't do that. Report it so it can be attended to. That is the wise decision. Do you hear me, students? Do you understand what I just said? Even though you have the right to refuse treatment, be very careful when you make that choice because it's very important to your health. Your medication that have been prescribed for you, students remember that even though you have your own decision, you make your own decisions for your life, keep this in mind. That when a doctor prescribes medication for you, it's for your own good. And it's for your health. If the medication make you feel bad, don't refuse it. Report how you feel to the caregiver so they can report it to the doctor. Be careful with your decision making when it comes to your health. Please be careful. Know how you are feeling so that the doctor can change that medication that is making you feel bad to a medication that will make you feel better for whatever you are being treated for. Don't just stop taking your medicine. That's very dangerous. Dangerous to your health. Don't just stop. Please don't do that. Sometimes doctors order you to eat healthy. Do not eat junk food. Do anyone know why a doctor will tell you don't eat all that junk food because it's not good for you? Do you have any idea why a doctor would say that? Well, let me share with you what I think. I think a doctor would tell you not to eat all that junk food because... Junk food is bad for your health. It is a health problem. It can contribute to a health problem. And it makes you want your game a lot of weight when you eat junk food. There's a lot of sugar and starches that's in junk food. So we have to be careful what we are eating. There's a lot of problems with sugar. Sugar make you have diabetes. It rise your high blood pressure. It make your pressure high. It has a lot of problems come with junk food. Those good old cookies that we eat and taste so good. Those cakes and them pies. Them potato chips. That candy. And them sodas. They are no good for us. 
We must be careful on the intake of junk food that we put into our bodies. We cannot eat junk food on a regular basis. But guess what? You have the right to eat it. No one can tell you you shouldn't eat it because that's your right. But why would you want to choose to eat all this junk food and down the line you get so very sick that the doctors will start putting you on medication, medication you don't even want. So use your mind very wise when you're choosing food. These days, we have to begin to eat healthy. Apples, grapes, bananas, those are healthy food. Lettuce to make a very good salad. That is called healthy eating. So guys, be careful on what you choose to eat. Even though you have that right to eat whatever you want to eat. Because no one has the right to tell you what to eat and what not to eat. So be careful anyway. Consider your health. That you don't want to get on this medication that make you feel all bad. Because that's all medication do. It make you feel bad in the long run. So be careful when you are choosing the food that you eat. Know your rights for your health. The reason I say that, because your health is the most very important thing that we have. Good health or bad health. And everyone wants good health. I want good health. I know you want good health. So we must decide to change the way we eat and stop eating all the candy, all the cookies, all the potato chips and drink all the sodas that we know is against our body. I hope you decide not to eat junk food and try to stay healthy so that you don't have to take all the crazy medication that is being dis described for us. Remember, if you are forced to take treatment when you refuse to take treatment, you can always file a complaint with the Department of Health. Minnesota Adult Abuse Reporting Center, M-A-A-M-C. Your identity is confidential. That means that no one have to know that you called and reported them. You can always file a complaint with this agency. And it cannot be re released. Without a court order, no one will know you call. So if someone force you to eat something you don't want to eat, or tell you you can't eat it, or they giving you medication and you saying, no, 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 I don't want that medication today. It make me feel bad. I don't want it. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Remember, if someone force you, you always can file a complaint with the Department of Health in Minnesota. Yes, it's up to you. Male treatment on vulnerable adults. Anyone can file a complaint. The phone number for filing that complaint, students, is one eight. Four, four, eight, eight, zero, one, five, seven, five. I'm going to repeat it again. The phone number for filing a complaint against someone who is forcing you to do something you don't want to do. That number is one, eight, Four, four, eight, eight, zero, one, five, seven, five. 
and this will connect you to a service that is available 24 hours a day. Someone are always there to answer the phone and take your complaint. So remember, you have the right to refuse treatment anytime you want to. But again, Miss Amanda going to tell you, it's not a good thing to refuse taking your medication. That is not good at all. So be very careful when you make that choice. Be very careful. Because medication is prescribed to make you feel better. And if it's not making you feel better, remember, your doctor will change your medication and get you to a medication that will not interrupt your feeling when you take it. But you will feel good when you're taking it. And in the same time, your health is continuing to get better. So be careful about refusing your medication. You have the right to refuse treatment. But be careful making that choice. Okay? I love you guys so much. Be careful. Be very careful. They have a website. The website is www.health.state.mn.us. And at this website, you can get your Bill of Rights. And you can get a list of supervised living facilities. So take advantage of that website. If you need to know some living facilities that you can apply for or you can go in, here is that website again. And they will send you a list of facilities that you can go to. The website is www.health.state.mn.us. So remember, know your rights. And the right that was spoken on today was you have the right to refuse treatment. You have that right. That is your right. So don't let no one take that right from you. But just be wise when you're making that right about your health and by treatment that being given to you. Be careful. Be careful. This is the end of the Bill of Rights for this, for this week for Miss Amanda. I just want you to remember, loved ones, know your right. Love you. See you next week. Looking forward to seeing you again. But always remember, pay attention to those Bill of Rights because they are so important to you because by knowing them, you will know what is for you and you will know what people can do to you and what people's not allowed to do to you. So remember, your Bill of Rights is very important. Again, the Bill of Rights for today, you if you're making decisions about your life, you have the right to refuse treatment. I love you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Stay tuned to Miss Joy and Miss Amanda talking to you guys about your Bill of Rights here at Rayfield and your Bill of Rights anywhere you are in this world. Those are your rights. And no one can take those rights from you. Ah, I, I love you so
Good morning. This is Miss Joy, your teacher from Rayfield. I'm here to tell you some things about education and your right to an education. Just because you have a disability does not mean you cannot learn. Our education should be just as everyone's. You, should, you are entitled to an education as everyone. We belong to a regular class as much as possible. You should be in a regular class as much as possible. The school must change so it works for you. You should be taught in a way that you understand. You should be taught in a way that you can understand what they're telling you. The way that they're teaching you is more understandable for you. If, if you need support to make it more comfortable and understandable, you should get it. Teachers must learn how to teach us. That's why they go to school. The school board must hire a trained teacher for every person's needs. Education is what will help you to be more independent. These are our fundamental rights. The schools should not have children of special needs in a manner just for keeping them quiet. These students can learn. Individual education plan is made available for uh, children between kindergarten and the 12th grade. This plan is there to help the teachers guide you through your education, regardless of your disability. It just takes time to evaluate and find a way for teaching you. And education means independence, a job, and your own money to go shop and get out as you want. Graduates have a prom where they have lots of beautiful special occasions. There's a red and white ball at Rayfield, dinner and awards night. Education has its rewards for everyone. You can enter an apprenticeship, which is where someone that is competent and have a license can help teach you their trade. Vocational training is also available to you and college is also there for, there for you to have to apply for what you need and do. Education is there for everyone if you want it. Technology is very high in demands. Excuse me. Here at Rayfield School, there are very special, highly advanced students in technology and each one teach one. Education is not only learned in school by teachers, but by each other. Learning is a very unique and special transformation of ability that is in everyone. Your own way is good, but you must be continuous and persistent. As I said, education is for everyone, 
in their own way and style. You have to want to learn and focus and find your way. The rewards are great. With that, go to school always, and at the end, you will be rewarded with a great future, jobs. There is something for everyone. Disabilities can't stop you. Students must notify their school and document their needs. Schools must provide tools and modifications to your learning needs. Help students take examples of school, oops. Okay, I have to read that little part over again, please. Help students take part in class. Examples, a school may offer course reading material in Braille for the visual impaired. Sign language for the hard of hearing. If you are discriminated against, you can file a complaint with the Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. You have rights, use them, ask for help, just ask. You have the right to go to college or vocational training, and you must let them know what your needs are so, so they can assist you. That is your right, and you are responsible for letting them know what you need. Good luck.